Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. It was Dr. Ro, Romy Barrios. Okay, so we are going to have another plenary topic, and this will be our last for this morning. And uh, we have another very important topic, especially since this is Gay Media Conference. Kaya nag-usapan natin kanina, presentation ni Dr. Romy was about yung mag-pitch, mag mag-present, uh, mag-sexualization. And when you think about that, you also need to consider yung ating copyright and trademark. Well, you need to understand properly kung ano yung ipipresent ng ating speaker or presenter in a few moments. Because kapag naitindihan natin ito, maiiwasan ko yung legal disputes. Okay? Kasi kapag hindi ka maingat sa copyright at trademark, baka sa korte na tayo magkita. <laughs> And also, um, this is also important to protect your own content para ma-protect ka din yung gawa ko. So, Sister Jessica, tell us about our next presenter. Yes, our guest speaker is an expert in her field and has years of experience in advising organizations on legal matters. She is currently teaching while doing her practice in law, she's teaching in the Adventist University of the University of the Philippines while practicing uh, law, and she is also pursuing her doctoral degree in AAP. Let us welcome Attorney Jezalu Cabajo Ugoso. Jezalu, welcome, Attorney. Welcome, Attorney Jezalu. Good morning to everyone. Thank you, Jezalu and Kevin. It's both a joy to work with them in Amazing Facts. It's also an honor to be in the midst of young men and women who are called to be influencers for the Lord. Amen. We live in a time and that technology is very powerful that we can reach many people wherever they are, we can reach the unreachable. So I know that the Lord has plans for you why He has placed you in this seminar for a purpose. So I would like to thank Pastor Joel. I could never say no to Pastor Joel. It's a joy to work with him back in the Center Church for Evangelism and now here in, in, in the Hope Channel. And speaking of Hope Channel, I had the privilege of witnessing the renewal of Hope Channel. Congressman Hart, Congressman Abayan, Bill Abayan, sponsored that bill in Congress for the renewal of our franchise. Let me share you a little story in connection with the renewal of the franchise. We were there when Congressman Abayan presented the franchise, the bill for the franchise of Hope Channel. There was one congressman who was vehemently objecting to the renewal of the Hope Channel because apparently there were compliances that were not fulfilled during that time. So a recess was made. Then out of the corner, there appears a congresswoman. May dumating na babae. Late. Then, umupo siya nung narinig niya yung pinag-uusapan nung break, pumunta siya dali-dali the congresswoman who was objecting to the renewal of our franchise. Kinausap niya. Then after the break, the congressman who was previously objecting said, I respectfully withdraw my objections. I was intrigued, so kinausap ko sa congresswoman She said, I am supposed to attend to another congressional meeting but I believe I was sent here by the Lord just in time. So when I heard Seventh-day Adventist, that is very special to me because I studied in an Adventist elementary school back in their province and her grandmother is a faithful Seventh-day Adventist. Kaya hindi ako nag-atabilin, pinuntahan ko si Congressman and yan si Congressman, hindi 
yan makakahindi sa akin. The Lord is so faithful, so the Congress approve it, the Senate approve it, that's why we have a franchise of Hope Channel for the next 25 years. The Lord can work miracles, amen? But importantly, the word Seventh Day Adventist is very special. Amen? That's why it needs protection from misuse. The name Seventh Day Adventist carries the true features of our faith in front. That's from our, um, that's from Mrs. Ellen White. No name which we can take will be appropriate. But that which accords with our profession and expresses our faith and marks us as a marks us as a peculiar people. That's why the General Conference of the Seventh Day Adventists has registered the trademarks in many countries. So the name Seventh Day Adventist Church, the Adventist News Network, Adventist Review, Adventist World Radio, AWR Hope Channel, and the Seventh Day Adventist is a registered mark. It is a protected mark. Seventh Day Adventist, the word Adventist, and of course our church logo. The church logo, there is a cross in the midst of the logo, there is an open Bible appearing at the bottom of our logo, and of course the three angels' message reflecting also the Holy Spirit. So let's take a look at the meaning of this logo. The second coming, the lines at the top of the design suggest an upward momentum symbolizing the resurrection and ascension to heaven at Christ's second coming, the ultimate focus of our Seventh-day Adventist faith. The flame, this is the shape formed by three lines encircling an implied sphere. The lines represent the three angels of Revelation 14 encircling the globe and our commission to take the gospel to the entire world. The overall shape forms a flame symbolic of the what? The Holy Spirit. And of course, the cross, the cross, the symbol of the cross representing the gospel of salvation is positioned in the center of the design to emphasize Christ's sacrifice in the cross, which is the central theme of our faith. And of course, the open Bible the Bible forms the base of the design and represents the biblical foundation of our beliefs. It portrays in a full, fully open position, suggesting a full acceptance of God's word as the foundation of our faith. So what is the trademark policy regarding our logo? The basic form of the symbol must not be modified. You cannot apply your creativity on the logo or you cannot distort it. The elements must not be added to or subtract, subtracted from the symbol. The symbol must not be altered in a way that would alter the symbolism of the design. Uh, as earlier mentioned, my meaning and power element of our logo. Okay, so I have here the copies. These are not allowed. Okay, hindi po tayo pwede makadistort, makaadd ng creative element on the logo. On the trademark registration, the office of the general conference is the one in charge for the office of the general council, rather, of the general conference is the one in charge for the registration of our trademark. Unless approved by the GC in advance, all registration should be made in the name of the General Conference Corporation of the Seventh-day Adventists or the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventists. Okay? Here in the Philippines, ang registration po ay nandoon sa 
Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines, the IP Office. So, Jan po. And I have here a slide presentation of the Philippine Trademark Database. Ito po. Nandyan po ang Adventist, Julie registered, the Seventh-day Adventist, yung buong name, and of course, our logo. So, it is protected. So, because it is protected, what are the rules governing the use of our logo and the use of our name? So, who are allowed to use that? First is the existing entities. Church entities that have denominational status and are included in the Seventh-day Adventist yearbook may use the trademarks in their names. Ayan po, this is a screenshot of the trademark. I mean, the yearbook, we have the Manila Adventist College, the Adventist Medical Center Manila, the AUP. So, nandyan po yung existing entity who ha which has denominational status. They are allowed to use the name. New entities, okay? New administrative entities such as new missions, conferences, union conferences, and divisions that are approved by the GC may use the trademark in their names and ministries. Local churches and companies may use the trademarks in their ministries once their status as such has been approved by the local conference or mission. So there should be approval. Question. How about lay and professional groups? Can they, uh, they are Seventh-day Adventists, can they organize and go to the Securities and Exchange Commission and have their names registered with the name Adventist? Pwede ba yun? Teacher ako, minsan nagtatawag ako for recitation para hindi natutulog yung mga mas tushan. Anyway, so under the rules, Lay and professional groups must apply, okay? They must apply and get the permission from the Office of the General Council for approval to use it. So if you have an organization, uh, uh, a new organization that you want to, to, to establish and you want to use the name Adventist or Seventh-day Adventist, uh, general rule law, <clears throat> that's not allowed because it's trademarked. I mean, it's protected. Aha. But if you want to use it, you can seek the approval of the General Office of the General Council. What will the GC do? They will look at your articles and bylaws that will indicate that you are independent of the church and not an agent of the church. And after receipt of the written notice, from the general conference, they will, there is a kulatilya that this, their organization is for non-commercial purposes. So it, not, it must not be engaging in profitable ventures. <clears throat> the church also reserves the right to revoke the use of the name for cause. This includes but is not limited to conflict with the objectives or doctrines of the church is determined by the general conference and once it is used for commercial purposes by non-church groups. So, the trademark policy of our church is that all use is subject to the general conference approval, particularly the office of the general council. Registration should be in the name of the GC corporation with use by a related entity subject to GC approval and any entity wishing to register must consult and coordinate with the OGC and the use is for organizations that has denominational status and listed in the year. So how does our church protect the trademark, the use of the name? So, we are advised that every level of the church is to help protect the church name and their uses, as well as the church logo and its use. Uh, you are in the internet, you have the ability to uh, 
police and to see people using it. So personal communication with innocent infringers, that may be your role. And of course, if we can embrace this to the Office of the General Counsel. There is a case uh, where here is the Creation Seventh-day Adventist Church. This is from Africa that they later branched in California. So, the Office of the General Council of the Adventist Church filed a cease and desist petition for this church to stop using the name Seventh-day Adventist Church. So, the law of the court in the United States issued a cease and desist order. The pastor in that church continues to use it. So, he was given a uh, an uh, order to remove that otherwise he will serve in jail time. So these are just a few success of the general conference in uh, protecting the use of the word Adventist. However, there are also many I've seen here in the Philippines they use some denomination using the name seven. We have raised that matter to the GC. Hopefully, we can be, that can be addressed. Another question, can the logo that we described earlier, can that be used in the tombstone? Can you use that emblem in our tombstone? Can in our tombstone? Can you use that emblem in our tombstone? Of course, that's allowed. Deceased church members who are Regular standing upon them may have their denominational logo placed on their tombstone as an emblem of their belief. Your commitment. So you can play, you can remind your your loved ones to place that if that is your desire. So the size must not be so big. It should not be larger than three by three inches or eight by eight inches. So, copyrights and trademarks are, are part of the intellectual property that are protected by the state. Here in the Philippines, we have the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines. This law seeks to protect and, ex and secure the exclusive right of scientists, inventors, artists, and other gifted citizens to their intellectual property and creations, particularly when it is beneficial to the people for such periods. So, this protects you as a creator of those um, intellectual properties. So, we go to copyright. Copyright is the legal protection extended to the owner of the rights of an original work. So, you can assert copyright only if it is an original work. Original work refers to intellectual creation in the literary, in the scientific, and artistic domains. So we have books, we have letters, dramatic compositions, musical compositions with or without um, lyrics or without words, drawings, paintings, work of arts, original designs, Okay? So these are part of copyright. These are protected under the copyright law of the Philippines, the IP law of the Philippines. In fact, the IP law grants authors, artists, and other creators automatic protection from the moment it is created. So the protection begins upon its creation. So the literary works are protected from the moment of creation. Works are protected by the sole fact of their creation irrespective of their mode or form of expression as well as their content, quality, and purpose. But for purposes of evidence, you usually submit that to the IPO, okay, for evidentiary purposes. So again, if it's not, that's why our church in um, reiterate that later, we want original work, okay? The Hope Channel Advocates original work. What are unprotected work that's not covered by intellectual property? So no protection shall extend under this law to what? An idea, an 
is not protected. A procedure, a system, or operation, a concept, a principle, discovery, a data, use of the name, or any official text or legislative or administrative or legal nature. So these are not part or cannot be subject of copyright. So what are the copyright or economic rights of an owner? The right to use it exclusively, the right to reproduce it, the right to transform, distribute, rent, perform, and display. And of course, the right, the moral right to require the authorship of the work to be attributed to them. In particular, the right that is named as far as practical be indicated in a prominent way on the copies and in connection with the public use of his work. So, if you, if an individual uses, sells, reproduces work which is not him that is copyrighted, the unauthorized use of copyrighted works such as copying, distribution, or public performance without permission is considered infringement and can result in legal penalties. The law prescribes administrative, civil, and criminal sanctions. So we do not want that. But of course, there are limits to copyright. The following acts shall not constitute infringement of copyright. What are this? The recitation or performance of a work once it has been lawfully made accessible to the public, if done privately and free of charge and if made strictly for charitable or religious institution or society that is outside the purview of the protection granted by law. What else? The reproduction or communication to the public by mass media, articles of current political, social, economic, scientific, or religious topic, lectures, addresses, and other works of the same nature which are delivered in public if such use is for the information purposes and has not been expressed and reserved, provided the source is clearly indicated. What else? The inclusion of a work in a publication, broadcast, or other communication to the public, sound recording, or film if such inclusion is made by radio administration for teaching purposes and is compatible with fair use, provided the source and the name of the author is appearing in the work are mentioned. So those generally in educational institutions, those for universities, including broadcasts for the use of such school, universities or educational institutions are not covered. So what is this fair use doctrine? The fair use of a copyright work for criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, including multiple copies for classroom use, scholarship research, and similar purposes is not infringement of the copyright. This is from the intellectual property law. In determining whether the use made of a work in any particular case is fair use, the following factors are considered. The purpose and character of the use, including whether such use is in commercial nature, or for non-profit educational purposes, nature of the copyrighted work, the amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole, and the effect of the use upon the potential market for core or value of the copyrighted material. For our hope channel, I have lifted these guidelines. So, in Christian respect for ownership and for the laws of our land, Project Home part participants are requested to carefully ensure compliance with international laws governing creativity and intellectual property, just as we respect laws governing physical property. We adhere to respect for the creation and properties of others. In television production, this means that we must secure by written permission the rights to use any music, artwork, photos, animation, video skits, and other creative or intellectual property to be included in the program. Without this written permission, the material cannot be used. But of course, there are free 
There are music that are open to public domain, that are free, that can be used. Permission must be granted in writing and must be granted specifically for this project, allowing for international and perpetual broadcast on the Hope Channel through any form of media now known or to be developed in the future. So we, our position is that as much as possible, we adhere to the laws of the intellectual property, especially in the making of our work. Care for the rights of the creators of intellectual property or for the rights of individuals over where their image appears and respect for the laws of our land are in harmony with our Christian principles. So given the restrictions of the, the law that we should use original work, we should ask permission, but I know that the Lord will always empower us. Um, we have here a student from the Adventist University of the Philippines. He produces development videos of original nature and in fact the videos were given recognition. He got first place in the youth and the oceans. This is an original video submitted. Okay, he is here. David Epstein, can you please stand up? A development student of the, from the Adventist University of the Philippines and recently he backed first place among 450 contestants worldwide in the video making competition against corruption sponsored by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Korea. So I always believe that creating an original video can be possible. Amen. I would like to share with you the video because this is just recent. Um, the video, it's a simple video but very definite meaning on the transparency. Uh, uh, this is a fight against corruption. Share this. Perhaps you can invite him over and share with us. He also crafted a video on intellectual property. Corruption is a pervasive problem. It impacts every part of society, from bribes and kickbacks to embezzlement and fraud. So when it reaches the public, there are only a few left. As young people, we feel hopeless and unable to voice our concerns in this matter. Try to imagine a world free of corruption. Education would be a right, not a privilege, where healthcare may be available, regardless of their social or economic status. Cities would be well planned and managed, with clean streets and efficient public transportation networks. Actually, all these things are attainable. We can stop imagining and start acting. Our phones are weapons in fighting corruption. Technology has provided us with access to government data where we can monitor government activities. There are hotlines we can reach where we can report corruption anonymously. Social media gives us a voice to garner public support in raising awareness. A tool to change the world in our very hands. Technology can be a powerful tool for promoting transparency and fighting corruption. We, the youth, can have a significant influence in holding governments responsible and ensuring that assets are used equitably and effectively. We are the voice of our generation, the hope of our nation. Thank you so much. Uh, David, can you come here and share with us your inspiration and how can you create an original video? Uh, hello, um, uh, good morning everyone. My name is David Agustin. I'm a second year development communication student and these are the works of our students at Adventist University of the Philippines. So by God's grace, we are representing the Philippines, not only here in the Philippines, but in the United Nations and other countries. Uh, we had the opportunity to meet the President of Korea and was awarded by the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And we met a lot of ambassadors from different countries. 
And you know what? When they ask me, where are you studying? I, I always be proud to say, I study at Adventist University of the Philippines. And I say, oh, so you're an Adventist? Yes. And, we, I, and we, I, I get to share my faith, not only to, uh, to the ambassadors of the world. And so it's a uh, really a nice blessing, really. And God works in amazing ways of how we can share our faith, not only here in the, our country, but also in, in international and in the world stage. So uh, I see a lot of young people here. Uh, AV is well known for its medical courses, but AV also excels in media courses. So if, you're, if you are um, thinking about um, developing your skills in communication and also in media or, or anything that relates to media, uh, you can go and in a, a, a study there. There's a lot of courses that are available and you can visit our book there at the site to see uh, these courses. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. So we had a promotion from our Adventist University of the Philippines. You can train there, not only for, for making the videos, but for preparing ourselves for eternity. So really that there are many challenges in making videos. There are also rewards in his in his in his um, for David he obtained rewards from abroad, but the word here in game, I believe the reward is more is great and far more eternal in terms of impact. In your hands you can share the gospel to many, many people. So despite the challenges, there are many obstacles, the Lord will always guide us in your ministry. I would like to end with the verse, trust, this is my favorite verse, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on thy own understanding in some ways, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct our paths. There is a story of a young girl whom I met, young lady, whom I met because of a case. Yung sasakyan nila was coming from, uh, from a company outing. They were traveling along SX, but the vehicle ahead of them missed the exit. So instead of going forward, the vehicle went reverse. And so they met an accident. He was sitting in front of the van, so the crowd, the collision was so was so immense that his, her feet rather, has to be amputated. I visited her many years ago in the hospital. We prayed together. She felt that it's the end of her life. A few months ago, she invited me in her speaking engagement. And after which she told me, you know, the, the accident, I thought that would be the most, that's the end of my life. But the Lord changed it. My life just began because of the accident. Now I inspire many people. I use social media, I speak and inspire people and draw them closer to the Lord. That tragedy becomes a blessing. Brothers and sisters, we may have obstacles in our lives, but when we commit our lives to the Master, He can use us in ways we could never imagine. So may the you, Lord, use you, and may the Lord bless you as we continue serving. This is my prayer.